Hi, this is Melanchol VE. In this episode, I'll show you how to create a tilt shift effect in LumaFusion. Here are some of the examples of the effect I created in LumaFusion as part of the research for this tutorial. I hope you are all doing well and staying safe. In the next few minutes, I'll do my best to entertain you and take your attention away from the ongoing issues. I hope I can manage to spark your creativity and get you thinking of new ideas for your next project. Now, let's get into the tutorial. On a high level, Tilt Shift is an effect produced optically by special lenses that allow setting a narrow focal plane. This way, only a small area of the image is in focus, while the rest, foreground and background, appear blurred and out of focus. Tilt Shift lenses can be used to create an effect where the objects in focus appear as if they were miniatures, models or toys. Although, as I mentioned earlier, this is an optical effect, it can be simulated digitally and in this tutorial I will show you how to do that in LumaFusion. This is the effect that we'll be creating for this tutorial. This is the original clip. Here are some factors to consider when selecting a video for this effect. A clip of a wide angle, where you can select a narrow part of the image to be in focus, will work better. Close-ups will not work at all. Your video should have a good separation between the subject, the background and the foreground. Using a clip that was shot from an elevated vantage point will help you with that. Specifically for LumaFusion, keep in mind that there is no masking readily available. If you can see a distant background through the subject, you won't be able to blur the background effectively while leaving the subject in focus. The effect is easier to implement if the subject is located in the middle of the image, but this is not mandatory. The subject on the camera can move, but the subject should be fully visible at all times, and the guidelines that I just mentioned should be considered throughout the clip. Before anything else, Let's start with the speed of the video. Speed it up, or alternatively, slow it down. The idea is to create a motion that doesn't look natural. The original footage I'm using is already sped up, so I don't need to change the speed. To change the speed of the video, edit the video, tap on the speed and reverse tab, and change the speed. You may need to try different speeds to see what works for your video. Next, use color grading to sell the idea that you're looking at a fake model. Go to the Colors and Effects tab, add a lot of your choice, and adjust saturation, vibrance, brightness, and contrast to end up with a final result where the colors are slightly exaggerated and look like the colors that you would find on a toy set. Now, go to the Drop section. Add the Gaussian 5 preset. By default, the value of the radio setting is set to 5. I will leave it as is. The actual value that you will use may be different depending on what looks good on your video. You may need to get back to this setting and adjust it once you're done with the effect. Exit back to the timeline. Clone the original footage. Drag the cloned clip to the track above the original footage. Edit the cloned clip. First things first, delete the Gaussian preset. Now go to the Frame and Fit tab and tap on the cropping section. You will be adding some keyframes shortly, so make sure that you are at the beginning of the clip. Adjust the left, right, top and bottom cropping settings so the area that you want to have in focus is selected. Make sure you can identify objects that cross or touch each of the lines of the rectangle that defines the cropped area. You will need to track those objects shortly when you add keyframes to compensate for the movement of the camera. For this video, the cropped area will occupy the entire width of the screen, so I'll worry only about being able to track objects crossing or touching the top and bottom of the cropped area. I'll use these trees to track the top of the cropped area 
and these two houses to track the bottom. At this point, the cropped area is in focus and the background is blurred, but there is a sharp transition between the two parts of the image. LumaFusion doesn't have a tool to gradually transition from focus to blur. Instead, still under the cropping section, you'll have to simulate the transition from focus to blur using the edge softness and corner radius. For edge softness, I find that low values work better, and for corner radius, higher values work best. For this video, I'm setting the value of the edge softness to 18.3 and the value for the corner radius to 100. As with some of the previous settings, this is a matter of taste and figuring out what works best for your video. Once you're satisfied with the results, add the first keyframe. Move forward a few seconds and adjust the cropping area so you are still showing the same area in focus. A keyframe will be automatically added. Check that the objects that crossed or touched the cropping area in the previous keyframe still do so. For this video, I'll make sure that the trees are still adjacent to the top of the cropped area and that the two houses are adjacent to the bottom. Keep adding keyframes and repeating the process as needed. This is how the final result looks like. For this example, we use one track for the background and one track for the area in focus. But keep in mind that in LumaFusion you have six tracks to work with. So by using cropping in each of the six tracks, you can better define what is in focus and what isn't. Here's an example. So this is it for this episode. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to this channel, give it a like and click on the bell so you are notified when I post new videos. Thank you for watching, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.